Europe is in the Northern Hemisphere, so I guess the European Union will go anti-clockwise when it finally goes down the plug hole, because that is where it's going. Like the Soviet Union before it, this monster is now visibly collapsing under the weight of its own illegitimacy. And the only question is, will it end peacefully by democratic means, or will it end in tears and blood? You don't need to be a student of history or of human nature to see something very ugly coming down the road in Europe if things go on as they are. There's already been social unrest in Greece, and there will be social unrest in other countries as people wake up and realise what's being done to them and what's been stolen from them. When you deny people a voice and disconnect them from the governing process, you close a safety valve, and unless it's opened again, you've guaranteed that sooner or later there will be an explosion. You know, people sometimes say to me, you're supposed to be an atheist, yet you're always talking about politics. Yes, that's because I'm an atheist who believes in democracy. I'm sorry if that's a difficult idea to understand, but I'm sure if you persevere with it, you'll be just fine. I live in a country within the European Union, though, so I find I believe in democracy in much the way a person might believe in God, more in hope than in certainty. Luckily, I have faith. I don't regard it as an end in itself, however, because I realise that democracy is far from perfect. But from what I've seen, it's the only form of government that can be trusted with our freedom, and I do regard that as an end in itself. The absence of democracy is the reason everything has gone pear-shaped here in Europe. Time after time, the people have made it clear that they wanted to go one way, and their self-appointed, unelected masters have pushed them in the opposite direction with a fanatical zeal that can only be called religious. Impervious to reason or to evidence, they've insisted on pushing blindly ahead, no matter what, as much in denial as any creationist. They're like medieval doctors who, when the patient fails to respond to an application of leeches, insist that the only remedy is to apply yet more leeches. And, as a consequence, what we have now in Europe is the worst of all possible worlds. A kind of mutant, statist, corporate socialism imposed from above by an unaccountable, dogma-obsessed political priesthood. The more power they get, the more they want, and the more they take. So far, we've seen two democratically elected prime ministers removed from office for not doing what they're told. The Greek Prime Minister committed the ultimate sin of threatening to consult the people in a referendum and he was removed so quick you can still see the dust settling. The Italian Prime Minister, a man with a barnacle-like ability to cling to office no matter what, was brushed aside like a piece of straw and now both Italy and Greece are run by puppet governments that have been installed by a foreign power and can no longer be regarded as sovereign nations by any honest measure of that term. What part of the word empire do you people in Europe not understand? The Italians were even told not to hold elections in the new year by an unelected bureaucrat who calls himself the president of the European Council. A man with the look and demeanour of a furtive rodent, Mr Anonymous from Belgium. Nobody knows who he is or where he came from, yet suddenly out of nowhere he's the emperor, I mean president of Europe. Not to be confused with the other emperor, the president of the European Commission, the thuggish closet Maoist, Mr Barroso. And I believe there is another president as well, some cipher from Luxembourg that nobody has ever heard of, and with good reason. They're very fond of giving themselves grand titles to go with their massive salaries, these people. I'm surprised they haven't awarded each other a chest full of medals like the Soviet commissars they really are. Predictably, they're using the crisis that they created as an excuse to grab even more power for themselves. They've now demanded total control over every country's national budget. It seems the soft totalitarianism that we had almost become used to in Europe is now openly hardening into the more familiar Soviet-style dictatorship, which people are belatedly realising has been the goal all along. Fortunately, there is still something, at least on a national level, that we can do about this democratically. And that's why there's been such a surge in support in several countries for freedom and independence parties who've come literally from nowhere in just a few short years, not least here in Britain.
where the people have made it clear to the politicians that they demand a referendum on our continued membership of this outrageous political swindle, this federal dictatorship in the making. And despite the fact that all three major parties have promised such a referendum, recently in Parliament they killed a debate on the subject when hundreds of MPs from all sides simply rolled over and voted the way they were told because their poxy careers are more important to them than the wishes of the people who put them there. And what's more, they expect, fully expect, to get away with it. They fully expect the people to go through the motions as usual at the next election and vote them straight back in. But if they can't be trusted with the fundamentals, and they've shown with flying colours that they can't, what can they be trusted with? It doesn't get any more fundamental than the right to decide how and by whom we are governed. Without that right, we might as well have no rights at all. So wherever you stand in the political spectrum, left or right, red or blue, yellow, green, or somewhere in between, this is something that should be uniting all of us because it directly and profoundly affects all of us and our children in the most fundamental way. If the fundamentals of a thing are wrong, it's likely that everything about it will be wrong and will stay wrong. And that's why we have to fix the fundamentals first and restore democracy before engaging in tribal politics because, frankly, none of that stuff will have any substance anyway. Without the right of self-determination, nobody's political views are worth a damn without the means to have them implemented. Those means have been stolen from us by the very people to whom they were entrusted for safekeeping. Not just here in Britain, but in every European Union country where the political class have closed ranks against the people they purport to represent. So, what are you going to do about this? How will you be voting next time around? Same again, same as usual. If you do, you'll be guaranteeing that it's emperors all the way from here on in. And you'll also be enacting something of a political paradox. You'll be using your democratic franchise to vote against democracy. A bit like using one leg to kick the other from under you. Because ultimately, you will be voting against your own freedom. So you might as well be voting against water or air. Peace? Yeah. If we're lucky.